Hey, what's up everybody, this is Ray. In this screencast, I'm going to show you how you can persist your data models into a database using Vapor, a popular server-side Swift framework. You'll see that all you really need to do is create a plain old Swift object and then derive your class from a built-in class called model, implement a few properties and methods, and you're done. You get the rest for free. In this screencast, we'll try this out by creating a model object to store internet acronyms like YOLO and what they mean, like you only live once. Believe it or not, it took me an embarrassingly long amount of time to understand what that acronym meant, so I'm really hoping that this app can help me understand my younger cousins. Let's dive in. I have a simple Vapor project here. It doesn't have much in it at the moment, except that it's configured to use a database, and that way when we're done here, we can test it out. The first thing I'll do is create an empty file for the model I want to create in sources app models acronym.swift and regenerate the Xcode project. Now let's create a plain old Swift object to store these acronyms. It will contain the short form of the acronym, like LOL, and the long form of the acronym, like Laugh Out Loud. We'll also create a convenience initializer. Let's create a simple Vapor route to create one of these objects and return it as JSON. If I build and run and test my route, it works. So far so good, but we can make this code even cleaner. Back in acronym.swift, let's start by importing Vapor and making the class conform to node representable. By implementing this protocol, you're saying that your class can convert itself to a node, which is an intermediate data format that allows your object's data to easily be converted to alternative representations, such as JSON or values to be stored in a database. You just need to implement one method, which is make node, and that returns a node. It's extremely simple to implement since you can just create a node with a Swift dictionary that contains node representable types. And Vapor has already made most of the basic types, such as string, already conform to node representable. Now that we've implemented node representable, we basically get the ability to convert this model into JSON for free. All we need to do is add JSON representable to the end of our list of protocols. Back in main.swift, we can delete all this code and return acronym.makeJSON instead. Let's try it out. And awesome, we've got JSON and our code is nice and clean. Now that we've got a data model, we're almost ready to store it in the database. But first, in order to store your object into the database with Vapor and its database engine Fluent, you need to make your object conform to the model protocol. By doing this, you get a lot of built-in functionality, such as the ability to save your objects, query your objects, and more. It's pretty simple, so let's give it a try. In acronym.swift, I'll mark the classes conforming to model. Note that model already conforms to JSON representable. Next, I need to add a property to store the unique ID for this object. It will be an optional node, which means that, again, it's that intermediate data representation. I also need to create a property to keep track of whether this entity was retrieved from a database or whether it was just created manually. Now that I've created the new ID property, I need to remember to set it to nil in the initializer and also to add it to the node that I make in make node. Another requirement is that I need to create a new initializer that creates my model object from a node. Think of it this way, Fluent pulls the data out of a database into an intermediate data representation called node, and now we need to convert that back into our type safe model. This is extremely easy. We can use node.extract to pull out each item by the keys we entered in make node. Next, we need to add a method that will be called to prepare the database. In other words, to create our database table for the first time. This is convenient because it means the model objects can set up their own database tables, rather than you having to run an external script beforehand. Here we'll create a database table called acronyms for this. Note that the name does matter. By default, you should name it to be the same as the class name with an S afterwards. Next, we'll create fields for each property on our object. We create an ID field with ID, and the others will be strings. There are similar methods for ints, doubles, booleans, raw data, and relationships. Finally, we'll implement a method to revert the database, which basically means to drop the table. Don't worry, this is only called if you manually run a command on the command line. Build and run to make sure you don't have any warnings anymore. Now that we've configured our class to support preparing its database tables, we need to add it to the list of preparations on the droplet. That's it. Now let's create a new route to test it out. We'll create a new acronym and we'll call the save method to save it to the database. Since we made our object conform to model, we get the save method for free. Next, let's return all the acronyms in the entire table as JSON. You also get a handy method for free called all that returns all of the entries in the table, and we'll call make node to return them as a node. If we build and run, we get an error. This is because we need to mark acronym as var, not let. 
because when we save the object, it mutates itself by updating its own ID, and that won't work if it's declared as a let. If we build and run, it works this time. We see a single acronym returned, and if I refresh, we see two. Also, since I included the acronym object in the list of preparations, it should have created the database tables for us, obviously. We can see this for ourselves by running the PSQL command line and running slash D to show all tables. Let's look at the acronyms table it created. Nice, there's our fields. You may have also noticed some tables generated by Fluent. If you select all from Fluent, you'll see that this is used for keeping track of which tables have been created. I point this out because it means you should use Vapor to prepare and revert tables rather than trying to do things manually, or you may get things out of sync. The way you use Vapor to prepare and revert tables is via the command line. And this is useful if, for example, you need to add a field during development and you just want to blow away the old data and start from scratch. To do this, you can run Vapor build to build your project from the command line, and then run Vapor run prepare slash dash dash revert to clear out the database. I can verify this works with PSQL. Note that the tables are no longer there. To prepare your database again, you can run vapor run prepare. And again, I can use PSQL to verify this works. Note that the acronyms table is back. All right, that's everything I'd like to cover in this screencast. At this point, you should understand how to prepare your model objects to be stored in a database with vapor and fluent. There's a lot more you can do beyond just saving your object to a database. You can also query data in different ways, you can update data, you can delete data, and that's the subject of my next screencast. Speaking of models, I've never understood fashion models in real life. They're just so clothes-minded. Anyway, I'm out.